called the cab. And got <laughs> you, just, you just do whatever you want. Yeah. Well, you know, down Yellow Cab was down on Grand, uh, 9th and Grand, I think, or 8th and Grand. Mm -hmm. And White Castle sat right across the street. And. Much better. <laughs> oh, I'm on Phil. Okay. Yeah, I'm rolling. And anyhow, he got a job. He worked for Kent Products, and they made margarine. He got out of that, and then he went to work for Yellow Cab. And he got robbed twice. The second time, they took him out in the country. He thought they were going to kill him. And he had eaten at White Castle, so he said, enough of that. So he went over and applied for a job at White Castle. And this is back in uh, about 32, and he uh, got got a job. But back then, White Castle, if I understand it right, you worked for them for two weeks, and they fed you, but they didn't pay you. And if they liked you after two weeks, they put you on a probation for a year. And I guess they liked it, but they kept it. There were a lot of guys that worked at White Castle. And they all decided to open little restaurants. Well, Dad and a partner opened one uh, at 2442 Broadway. And they ran it for a while, and then they bought this one down here, and they bought one in Linwood and Bay. And then they had a falling out. And so Dad bought him out, and then he had three. And I was born in 37, and that's when Dad started these. So these are 78 years old. And then he just went from there, and I came in. I worked part-time in the late 40s. I, in fact, I'd get up in the morning and walk down to 63rd and take the bus over to Brookside and ride the streetcar down to the Union Station and walk over to Broadway and uh, make $5 a day. <laughs> but, uh, and that's how we got started. And then it just kind of grown from there. Uh, I started here in 1966 full time, and I've been here ever since, till Scott bought me up. And it's been good to us. It's uh, we've had a lot of lot of help. I can remember during the war, Dad had to go out and get his food out on the farm somewhere, and get you know get his meat, get his whatever else he had to have. And it was tough back then. But, uh, that's just about the story of Town Topic, and we've been around forever. So, I say forever, a long time. It seems forever for me. Yes. Opening day, yeah. uh, I was just born. So, but he, uh, he, they worked, I think he worked 12 hours, and then they had a night man. <clears throat> and then Haywood Billings was his partner, and he worked 12 hour shifts. So, and that's how they got started. And the first day, I think he took in $21. <laughs> and uh, and that back then, hamburgers, just a nickel for a dime, you know, very cheap. And you could get a bowl of chili for 15 cents, you could get a piece of pie for a dime. But those days are gone forever. But that's how he got started. And then he got with LNC Meat Company and worked out a deal with them in 1947. And we've been with them ever since. And, uh, but he's, he's done a lot of good. He's sponsored Blind, the Blind Association up the street. Uh, sponsored their bowling teams. And that's a revelation to watch them bowl. And then he sponsored the baseball leagues. Or Yeah, in fact, he started the Southeast League. He and a group of men. He's been good. He was in scouts. He was a scoutmaster and, and uh, donated some things to the police department. And, uh, there was a lady who worked nights at 19th and Baltimore. And somehow she decided to make this truck stop, which was just eggs and just all kinds of stuff in it. And it uh, became a truck stop and it became so popular we just put it in the rest of the places and sell a lot of them. I can't eat one, there's too much food, but we sell a lot now, so. And then we make our own chili. And it's been around since <clears throat> after the war, World War II. 
But yeah, we just had a lot of different things going on. You could write a book about what goes on here. So you've had a lot of repeat customers? A lot of repeat customers, customer yeah. Loyalty. That's what I really like about the business. It's not so much the work, it's the people you meet. They're just some wonderful people, man. You know, just the, the Hispanic community's been good to us, and uh, the uh, African American have been good to us. And we just have a lot of people that come in from all different walks of life. We've had executives come in, we had Al Gore come in one time, uh, Gerald Ford's stayed over at Crown Center and ordered I don't know how many hamburgers uh, one evening. And Del Dunmar got married. I, I don't know whether you're familiar with Del Dunmar or not, but anyway, he had a real nice wedding downtown and he ran out of food, so I walked in at about 4.30 and he'd called and ordered 50 cheeseburgers and hamburgers, so. I moved the gal over and I cooked them and, uh, and she waited on the customers and got him served. But these are the kind of people you, you meet with a lot of television personalities, a lot of wrestlers used to come in here, uh, professional sports guys come in. So it's just, it's just been a, an interesting business. It, it'll wear you out. I'm, a, I'm about worn out. Scott's about worn out. That's the history of Town Topic. We uh, eventually built the, the six, and then due to the city expansion, we lost a couple and other other reasons. So we we uh, dropped down to, to three, and we used to sell chili on the side, and uh, the government shut us down on that because they, uh, we couldn't do what they wanted us to do. So. But their, their whole theory was they were trying to get rid of the little uh, companies that sold meat products because they had to have a federal inspector. They wanted, they were saving money, so they eliminated a lot of us. So. Quality of your product is? We try to get the very best we can for the money. Because I, I have found in a lot of other places too, but we found that if you cut quality, you're, you're going to lose customers. One time we had a good pancake mix, and I had looked and finally found one. And they shipped them out of, uh, I think, Indianapolis, up there somewhere. And anyway, they let me know that they were going to not ship it to me anymore. And we'd buy 10 boxes, which were so so. And so I changed the pancake mix. I had to. And I had customers jump me and chew on me and, and, and you know, why'd you change this? Why'd you do that? So they know when you change quality. So anyway, I got hold of the salesman and I said, what's going on? And he called out and talked to the boss there at, at, uh, at the supply house and really jumped him. And we started getting our pancake mix back. And, I'm, and we still use it. It's just a good pancake mix. When I came down here when I was 14, or, and almost 15, and I'd get in the back at noon hour at 24th and Broadway, that's where I started. And I'll bet they had me make them milkshakes, and I would make 60 or 7 at a noon hour, all hand dipped, and we used chocolate milk at that time. And boy, they were good. But I, <laughs> my arm <laughs> was tired. But that's from probably 11 to 1, somewhere in that area. So, but that's all I did was make milkshakes. But we don't have that luxury now. We, they, they all do it. So. But we're back to hand dip. We used to be like the custard, you know, the smooth ice cream. And we changed back to hand dip. And it's a better milkshake, but it takes longer. And we have malts. We were just kind of a small, at one time we used to have soup, oyster stew, spaghetti red, but <clears throat> we don't have the facilities now. We used to have a little soup kitchen that Heinz put out, it was about that big. You know, we used to sell a lot of soup. In fact, we would order. We'd get 50 cases of soups, 50 cases of ketchup. I don't know how many cases of Hilton's oyster stew. And then 
like I say, we, we have our chili still, but we don't have spaghetti roux. And they had a beef stew that Heights put out, and that's the best canned beef stew I ever ate. But they quit making it, so I guess they couldn't make any money. But it was sure good. You know, I had no idea what to do. I tried, I sold life insurance for two years. And they said I was doing good, but I was starving. But it was a good education. But so I don't know, but I get thinking now, and I, I would like to have maybe work for John Deere or sold, sold something, you know, because I like farming. You know nothing about it, but I like it. Trying to sell something interesting, you know. But, but, uh, I like antiques, but I'm not good enough at it to sell it. That's a hard way to go anyway, unless you're one of the Kino brothers. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, just something that with people, that's where my test scores would always be sales or music or you know, I played in a couple of bands when in college and uh, played the saxophone. Tried to be an athlete but I wasn't very good. But, but just good. I, I'm glad that I was able to pass it on to Scott. I wish my dad could be here. <clears throat> but Scott's done a very good job, a lot better job than I did. Anyway, I just hope he sticks around. I've got a few more years to live, and then when I die, well, he can do what he wants with it. <laughs> and he will, you know. But he's trying to save it for his kids, I think, or his son.